Okay, in this video, we're going to look at Euler's method, which is basically brute force differential equations. And it's a lot like uh, numerical integration. Where So we're going to use a spreadsheet. And so let's just uh, recap numerical integration for a second. So we're going to recap numerical integration. And then we're going to show how to use Euler's method to do essentially the same thing with differential equations. OK, so numerical integration, I'm going to have an x. I'm going to have a y. And then uh, over here, I'm going to have a dx, which I'm going to set equal to some value, some small value. And then here, I'm going to say, I'm going to start off with an x equals 0. My next x is going to be the previous x plus that value. And I want to lock that in with dollar signs. And then my y is going to be whatever function that I want to have. And so in this case, I'm going to do 3 times x squared. So my y value that I'm using is, th is 3x squared. And so we're going to use the, and so now we're going to sort of differentiate that. And so I paste that there. And what I want to do is I want to find my dA, the small little part of my area, is going to be equal to f of x times dx. Let's uh, change that around to f of x. And then my A is going to be the capital F of x which is the integral of f of x dx. So then I take the integral, or basically I'm finding the area of the boxes that have a height of f of x and a width of dx. And I always want that width to be the same, so I lock it in with dollar signs. And so there's the area of my first box. And so then if I do the sum, starting with C2, and I want to lock that in with dollar signs. And then we'll let this one float. This should calculate running sums for me. OK, so now, so this one is each individual box's height times its width. And then this one is the sum of all the boxes in this column. So I should be able to take these, copy them, give a little paste, go down to like 302 or something like that. And what we find is here is my left Riemann sum. And here's my right Riemann sum. And if we take the average of those, equals average, boom, let's do that. I get 27.00015. So basically 27. Well, now you guys are well enough along in the class to know that if I take the antiderivative of 3x squared, I should get x cubed. And then if I evaluate x cubed plus c at 3, I get 27. And if I evaluate it at 0, I get 0. And so I get 27 minus 0 is 27. OK, so there's your recap of numerical integration. Now we're going to do Euler's method. And so it's going to basically be very, very similar. We're going to have an x. We're going to have a y. We're going to have a dy. Over here, we're going to have a dx, which, again, we're going to set equal to 0.01. I'm going to start off with an x of 0. This next x is going to be equal to the previous x plus my 
dx. So I'm just ratcheting up the x values by 0.01 each time. I'm going to start with an initial y value of 0. And now this is where things get a little bit changed. My new y value is my previous y value plus my dy. Now my dy, this is where everything is going to be funky. So I'm going to look at this one right here. So here's from a previous video, I had dy dx equals x minus y, or just dy dx equals x minus y over 1. So dy dx equals x minus y. So that says that dy is going to be equal to x minus y times dx. Well, if I put that into a formula, there's my parentheses, there's my x, there's my y, and then my dx stays the same, so I'm going to lock that out as f1. And there's my d, and so there's my dy equals x minus y times dx. It doesn't look like much now, still doesn't look like much there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go down a few. I'm going to paste it. And now what I'm going to do, let's go back down there. Start there. Come up here. Make a chart. Make an XY chart. I don't care about column C. I shouldn't have put it in there. And so there is a graph of a solution to this equation. So if I start at 0, 0, then I start off with a slope of 0. So that makes, so that makes me go to the point 0, 1. So 0 0.01, 0. Now I've got a slope of that. So I do go over to my next point. So basically, I'm just ratcheting up my y value. So here I take this and I put that there. Now I take this, add it to that, and I get that. This number added to that number gives me that number. This number added to that number gives me that number. So whatever y value I'm at, I go up by the slope times dx, and that gives me my new, my new value. So let's just look at uh, this over here. So can I get to that one? So that's like about that. So there's my 0 to 3.5, and there's my 0 to 3.5. It looks very similar. Now if I go up to 4, I get that. So if I go uh, let's slip it out to 4, so on this one, if I go start at 4, it drops down and then it shoots back up. And so on this one, it drops down and then it shoots back up. So what this is doing is it's not telling me what the formula for this line is. So it can't tell me what the formula for that line is. But for basically any differential equation that I want to put in there, it can give me a solution starting off with initial conditions. So if I want to know, if I start at 0, 4, where am I going to be when I get to x equals 3? Well, I can just go down here to x equals 3. And I can see that I'm going to be at about 2.25. So the 0.3 comma 2.25 is a solution, is on the solution to this differential equation. Okay, so then let's go back. Uh, let's see if I still got it up here. I don't think I do. Um, but if I go 
this other one that I had, sine x times, uh, let's do it this way. Sine x times uh, cosine x squared. That's the one that I, I think I had that one. Uh, sine x times cosine x squared, yes. And my solutions to that were tan y equals minus cosine x plus my c. And let's zoom in a little bit. to zoom out then I guess okay so that's what we we're looking at before so let's see if we can get something like that over here so if I do sine x times cosine squared x cosine let's do that okay so, I want to start at the point zero, zero. I want this to be sine of that cell times the cosine of that cell squared I'd be inside right there squared times dx and then I gotta paste that down into here <clears throat> okay now I can sort of, so there you sort of see, there's a little bit of a wiggle you can sort of see. So I've got up to 3.5, so let's say I want to go out to 7, so let's make this uh, 0 0.2, and then it sort of, it sort of blows up on me. Uh, so make that 0.1, let's make that 1. Oh, I made a point two. That's too. Uh, that's what I want to do. There you go. That's what I want to see. Okay. So then Euler's method there is giving you that wiggle, where it goes zip, 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 and then like that. So that is a lot like that. Okay. So that's my video on Euler's method.